It may seem perverse to say so, given that BT shares have fallen by nearly 40% on his watch, but news that Gavin Patterson is stepping down as BT's chief executive still comes as something of a shock. This is because Mr. Patterson appeared to have survived the moment of maximum risk the arrival of Jan Duplessis as BT's chairman last November and then last month's strategy announcement which was accompanied by news of 13,000 job cuts. Mr. Duplessis, a teak tough Afrikaner and veteran of Britain's boardrooms, was expected to dispense with the services of Mr. Patterson, who had been appointed by his predecessor Mike Rake, in fairly short order. But what leaps out from Friday's trading statement is that Mr. Patterson had the backing and support of his chairman even when the strategy announcement received a raspberry from the stock market. The most important relationship any chief executive has is with his or her chairman and so the significance of backing from Mr. Duplessis cannot be underestimated. What has changed during the last month is that BT's shareholders have obviously told Mr. Duplessis they wanted a change of chief executive. This is explained in the crucial line in BT's stock exchange announcement on Friday. Image, BT Chairman Jan Duplessis had backed Mr. Patterson Mr. Duplessis said, the board is fully supportive of the strategy recently set up by Gavin and his team. The broader reaction to our recent results announcement has though demonstrated to Gavin and me that there is a need for a change of leadership to deliver this strategy, this explains the curious timing of this announcement. Had Mr. Duplessis and the rest of the BT board not had confidence in Mr. Patterson, they would have shown him the door before last month's strategy announcement, but they did not. They clearly had faith in him to deliver on it. Believe it or not, BT actually emerges from this with some credit, in particular Mr. Duplessis. This is exactly how good corporate governance is supposed to work. The board of a company, in particular the chairman, is there to ensure the wishes of the shareholders, the owners of the company, are respected. It will not have been easy for Mr. Duplessis to remove a chief executive in whom he had confidence, but he has listened to his shareholders. Image, Mr. Patterson has been at the helm of BT for nearly five years who's next? Well, the two leading internal contenders will be Simon Lowe, the newish chief financial officer, who has had experience of being a chief executive, albeit on an interim basis, from his time at drugs giant AstraZeneca. However, he has recently been criticized for not having sufficient skin in the game, having bought only £22,000 worth of BT shares since joining the company two years ago despite having earned many millions of pounds in his previous job at oil and gas giant BG Group. that is likely to be counted against him. All in contention will be Mark Alera, the head of BT Consumer, who joined the company as head of 8 the mobile business acquired by BT two years ago. However, in BT's soon-to-be-closed headquarters across the road from St. Paul's Cathedral, it is Mr. Alera's former boss at Dutchman Olaf Swanty, who is being talked about as Mr. Patterson's likely replacement. He has all the credentials for driving through a tough restructuring of BT having done the same thing at E, which was formed from a merger of the UK arms of German-owned T-Mobile and French-owned Orange. Also potentially in contention is Liv Garfield, the chief executive of water company Severn Trent, who knows BT well from her time running OpenReach, owner of BT's phone and broadband network. Image, BT shares fell by nearly 40% with Mr. Patterson as chief executive The dynamic scousers time at Severn Trent has seen a big step up in infrastructure investment, a diffusing of unhappiness over poor customer service and relatively cordial relations with the industry regulator, three things BT will be desperate to achieve under its new chief executive. Ronan Dunn, the former chief executive of O2, has also been suggested in some circles. The charismatic Dubliner can probably be ruled out, though, on the basis that he is earning more in his current job at Verizon Wireless, America's biggest mobile operator, than he would at BT. Other internal contenders will include Howard Watson, BT's technology chief and Clive Sallet, the current boss of OpenReach, although the BT board may be loath to move either.
Mr. Watson is leading crucial work to build out 5G while, given the laser-like focus on open reach at present from the industry regulator Ofcom, moving on Mr. Sele, a West Ham supporting BT lifer, would risk disrupting work vital to the future of BT's structure. And what of Mr. Patterson himself? Critics will alight on the things that have gone wrong on his watch, an accounting scandal in BT's Italian arm, a grueling two-year battle with Ofcom over the future of OpenReach, a failure to stem the reversal in revenues or to improve markedly BT's poor record for consumer service and modernize parts of a business that, in many respects, still behaves like a nationalized industry. And, above all, his insistence on investing billions in football rights rather than on fiber. Some of these, in time, may turn out to be positives. Mr. Patterson still insists the sports rights investment will pay off, longer term, in defending BT's share of the broadband market while, although the Ofcom negotiations were tough, he ultimately staved off a breakup of BT, the big undisputed positive is the acquisition of E. But his true legacy may only become apparent several years from now.